Okay. Today, what I want to talk about is a little um, something that I bought. Uh, I bought actually last December. It is the Movo Photo MTP 1000 Panoramic, and Panoramic is spelled wrong. 360 degree, 60 minute time lapse tripod head for cameras, DSLRs, GoPros, and smartphones. It's uh, this thing right here. Um, I've been using this thing for a little while now and um, I'll post a link to it in the description. Um, now, I've bought a couple of things from Movo, I think, in the past. Um, although, if I hadn't had prior experience with Movo, I probably would have, uh, if I didn't have prior experience with Movo, I probably would not have bought this. Because this thing sets off a couple of red flags for me. Uh, in terms of stuff that I buy, camera stuff that I buy on Amazon. One, uh, at least based on the picture that I have uh, on Amazon right now, it's the MTP-1000 because it uh, makes a full rotation in an hour. Uh, there's an MTP-2000 that makes a full rotation in two hours. It goes a little bit slower. Um, one, uh, the image for this, so here it says Movo right on the actual product itself. But on the image, if you look at it online, you can clearly see that they just have a, an image of the product and they've put digitally superimposed their logo on that photo. So they didn't actually have one of these, even though it only cost $19.95 um, when they made the Amazon listing. That's kind of one red flag for me. So like, I know that like, if you look at anything, so like I buy a lot of like uh, remote clickers for work, I buy a lot of mice, I buy a lot of like accessories. Uh, both for work and for at home. And if you look for that stuff on Amazon, there's always like a world of kind of like um, knockoffs usually from uh, Asia. And uh, the, the exact product, the shell is like exactly the same, but um, the product itself uh, is just made by who knows. Um, and they put like a logo on it. So that's one of the things I look for. And the other thing that I look for is spelling mistakes in the title of the product. And this one has one. Uh, panoramic is not how you spell panoramic. Um, but that being said, uh, I looked around, you know, you can spend less than $20 for these things. You can spend a lot more than $20 for these things. You can spend up to $100. Um, but I, didn't, I, I don't like to spend, I mean, it's kind of like a one trick pony, it spins. And so I didn't want to spend too much on something like this. Um, so $20 was kind of like a sweet spot for me. Maybe I overpaid for it, maybe I didn't. Now the way that this works is um, you, uh, this is a quarter 20 uh, screw that'll fit your bottom of your camera and essentially you rotate it. So here's kind of like the, the lines and you rotate it and it'll start ticking. I don't know if you can, I don't know, can you hear that? Here's the mic. It, it'll start ticking. And as it's ticking, it's slowly, you know, I turn it this way, and then it'll slowly, I turn it this way, and then it'll slowly start ticking back to the original location. Um, and then as it, when it gets to the end, it'll buzz very, very loudly. And so I've played with this for a couple of vlogs. So if you guys are um, uh, that have been following, you've probably seen a couple of the time lapses. Um, I'll post a link to them up here and I'll put links in the descriptions. So you can see some of the ones that I've done. And uh, after this, I'm gonna go outside. It's been really overcast in Chicago, but uh, I'm gonna try and uh, go outside and get some extra footage specifically for today so you can see more of what it can do. Um, so basically, and let me put my um, GoPro on it. And what, what this thing came with, for 20 bucks I got this, and I got uh, a tripod mount for my GoPro. Not the GoPro, but actually the mount. And then I also got a mount for your phone, like a cheap one, the kind that like kind of come on uh, selfie sticks. Um, so you can put a phone on here, you can put this on here, um, and you screw this on top. And basically what you'll see is the, uh, the camera will start to slowly rotate. And so you hit record, um, whether you're doing a time lapse or taking a video and you're gonna speed it up later, 
Um, I usually like to take a video and speed it up later. Um, so then it'll rotate around and then you'll get like a nice sweeping, a smooth sweeping motion going around. Um, and in terms of that, it does this really well. Um, when I can get it to work, and I'll explain what I mean by that, when I can get it to work, I'm always really happy with the results. And I'm gonna put that way over there because it's ticking. And to make it kind of stop ticking, you can um, kind of speed it up. But I always feel like if I'm doing this, I'm gonna like grind on the gears or whatever that might be in there. So I usually just let it go. Um, some limitations though about this thing. Uh, one of the limitations though is that it only spins counterclockwise. Uh, more expensive versions of these products let you choose between counterclockwise or clockwise. I gotta do something about this, driving me insane. There's the ring. So, um, more expensive versions of these kinds of products will let you choose whether you're spinning counterclockwise or clockwise. Um, and even more expensive versions of these types of devices will let you change the speed at which it rotates. So if you want to get like a full panorama in two minutes, you'll be able to do it. Whereas if you want to get a full panorama, I think to go from like 90 degrees in this device would take about 15 minutes. Um, I've never actually tested whether the 60 minute indicator on here actually goes 60 minutes or not. Um, because most of the time lapses that I shoot, uh, I'm usually shooting video for about anywhere between three minutes is usually on the short end and uh, eight to 10 minutes is on the long end. Uh, but I think like six to eight minutes is usually a good amount of time for a time lapse if you're looking for movement of very large things like clouds. If you've got people, uh, traffic, things like that, probably you don't need quite so much time. Um, and so in that situation, you might want a faster, um, one of these 360 degree panoramic time-lapse tripod head. Now they call it a tripod head because it's got a, uh, a female quarter 20 port here, port uh, hole here. And um, what you could do with it is you would um, screw that part onto the top of your um, tripod and mount it in that way. And so that way you can either set this flat on the ground or you could set it up elevated high on top of a tripod in order to get your shot. And so sometimes I do that at home. I'll set this up by the windows on my tripod and um, I'll have it rotate. Now some of the limitations of this product. Um, even though the product says that it um, can support up to 4.4 pounds, which my Sony a6300, which is right now mounted up top and getting the um, overhead shot here, um, that certainly falls within the 4.4 pound category. What I found is that when you are actually rotating this and it starts ticking, unless it's completely level, um, the weight of a heavier camera, like the, not that the A6300 is heavy, but com heavy compared to say smartphones and uh, GoPros, um, the weight of that will actually stop it from rotating. And so like, I th I'll think that I have it set for like 30 minutes, but after maybe like three, it'll stop. And so when I go back to look at my time lapse, it kind of started like this, and then it's just stuck in one spot. And so that's very frustrating because I would like to be able to not always have to look directly head on for a time lapse. So, like, you know, one thing that I would like to get is a very low angle shot and I'm looking up, whether I'm looking up at people or at a tall building um, or out at the sunset, uh, I'd like to usually have it at an angle. I almost never want it to be directly head on. And so that really limits my ability to use this with um, say like a regular camera like the A6300. For GoPros, uh, I can usually use it. Um, to even when it's on an angle. Uh, but what I do find though is that um, this thing seems to be on something that's very like, it's like maybe there's a spring in there or a coil. And so if I only say want to get like an eight minute time lapse, you know, I might think that I just have to rotate this portion right here, maybe halfway between zero and 15 minutes. Um, but when I do that, I find that even just the weight of the GoPro and even when it's completely level, um, 
it will go for maybe three or four minutes and then stop. And so even just the weight of a GoPro on it will stop it from making the complete resolution revolution all the way to zero. And it's not all the time, so maybe I'm not always completely level. I admit I don't usually check like the level bubble um, when I set up my uh, tripod. So what I end up usually doing is if I wanted to get say eight minutes of uh, rotating time-lapse footage, I'll set the timer way past 15 and set it up that way so that way and then I'll just come back whenever I'm done and actually stop it, um, stop the video filming at whatever point that I want when I'm done. And so I don't rely on it to end ticking. Uh, and that's primarily because you heard the ring before. It's really obnoxious to hear the ring. Uh, so I don't like to let it tick all the way to the end unless I'm manually twisting it. But I also feel like by manually like accelerating it to the end point and making it ding, I feel like I'm wearing, I'm putting extra wear on, on this device and it doesn't really feel like the most robust device I've ever had. So those are some of the limitations. I think it's great for GoPros. I don't really use it that much for my smartphone. Um, I just haven't had the opportunity to do it uh, because anything that I would, might want to do on my smartphone, I probably would rather just put the GoPro on here and use the smartphone for something else. Um, so I just haven't had that happen yet. But the weights are pretty similar, so I imagine the results will be pretty similar too. Um, but that's pretty much it. Overall, for $20, I think it's a decent buy if you understand the limitations. Although, as I started doing more and more of these, I really wanted to be able to kind of turn the other way too. Uh, and now that I have one that only goes counterclockwise or from right to left, I keep thinking, oh, there's so many like situations where I might want to take a shot that goes from left to right, but you know that'll be for another day. Um, maybe at some point I'll upgrade this to a nicer version, or maybe when this dies, I'll upgrade to another version if I find that I'm using it frequently enough. But one of my vlogging resolutions for this year was to make sure that I'm using um, the accessories and kind of tools that I'm already that I've already bought because uh, I love to shop for these things and I love to buy them. But then I end up not really using them that, them that much, so I want to make sure that I am using this. And um, with that being said, I think right now I'm going to head out um, from my office and go run around the loop a little bit and try and get some footage of this little device in action. battery on the a6300 I only had like 30% or 40% to start with so it's not like I ran through the entire battery um, running a little bit short on time I think I have time to walk to one more location so far I think uh, you know obviously I can't see what the time lapse is gonna look like ahead of time but um, just running around a little bit in the loop here I think it turned out pretty good I'm pretty excited about what I got I want to go to one more spot then I gotta head out, pick up my daughters, and have dinner.
what's going on.